let's start with the history of the Dow, if we could. Sure. Well, first off, I think uh, any of the indices that are out there, especially the major ones, and of course that's the Dow Jones and the S and P 500 and the Nasdaq, and even the Wilshire 5000, which we call the total uh, stock market index. They're yardsticks. You know, it's how we measure what's going on in a day, in a week, in a month, and so and so forth with uh, where the return. Uh, returns are coming in at. Um, if we but, go but back, people think it's an average of the whole market. No, it's not. No, that, that's that's no, my point, right? Yeah. The closest we'd come to would be that Wilshire 5000, you know, because that uh, it means 5,000 stocks are in that index. Um, let's go back to what your question was and where did it all start? And it started back in 1896 with a guy named Charles Dow. And he created actually two indexes, Dean. One was called the Transportation Index. The other was the Industrial Index. Now, even though they created at that time, Charles Dow was actually an editor for the Wall Street Journal. And even though he had been uh, uh, privately uh, creating these measure measurements, if you will, of what's going on in the marketplace, but it wasn't until uh, in 1916 that the first publication of the Dow Jones Industrial Average was published in the Wall Street Journal, where Charles Dow was an editor. Okay, so what was the major point behind Charles Dow's uh, creating this Dow Jones Industrial Average? What was he trying to do? His viewpoint of this is, uh, as so goes these number of stocks, uh, they all kind of follow in place. In other words, there's commonality in what the returns are. Uh, and at that time, it did make more sense from that perspective, Dean, for the simple reason that most of it had to do with rails and industry. Remember, our economy back then, back then was manufacturing. Right. So the rails would have been the transportation index. Right. And, and then the industrial index would have been our manufacturing. Exactly right. Yeah. And that became, you know, the index that people turned to to find out how the market did on any given day. And uh, interesting because even today, the Dow Jones Industrial Average is used worldwide. Now, the problem with that is that it really only represents about 25% of the market, okay? If you look at the S&P 500, and we'll get to that in just a moment, uh, it represents 80% of the total market. So uh, those are measurements that are different. So my point is this, is that if I'm trying to find out how the market really did that day, I'm not looking at the Dow Jones. I am looking at the S&P 500. But people talk more about the Dow than anything else. And is that because it's older? Yeah, that's right. It's, it's, it's familiarity more so than anything else. How many stocks are in the Dow? 30. And so, so those 30 stocks make up what percentage of the total market? 25. Okay, so is that market capitalization then? Is that what that is? Actually, the Dow is a price-weighted index. The S&P 500 is a cap-weighted index. So the price-weighted index is simply taking the number of shares, multiplying it times the price to come up with a weighted average for what that is. Uh, that's really not the best way to measure it. Actually, the S&P's cap-weighted index is a, is a better way of telling right, what so the market is. speak did. in English to the people that are listening to our podcast. What do you mean? Well, the capitalization of the companies, you know, where one was measuring really what the total stock exposure was with the Dow and what might be happening, the capitalization is, what is this company worth? And therefore, it will have a certain influence on what the index will actually give in any given day. All right. So let's go back to the Dow Jones Industrial Average. And we got 30 stocks that mm -hmm. are in the Dow Jones Industrial Average. Have those 30 stocks remained consistent since its uh, inception. inception back in 1916? Uh, actually, it's not changed very much, Dean. Uh, some have fallen off in uh, 55 changes as, as uh, the only uh, number that have occurred uh, since the first beginning of that. So any, any surprises in the uh, stocks in the Dow? Who's, who's been kicked out? Well, I don't have that list, you know, as associated with it, but I will go to this one, and that is the longest-running company that was in the original Dow uh, index uh, was General Electric. And that got pulled out of the index in 2018 because the company was struggling, but uh, seems to be at this time uh, picking up again. And it would not surprise me that within another five or ten years that you might see GE back in the index. It's interesting because this is supposed to be an industrial average yet, I'm pulling up the uh, list of the stocks in the Dow Jones Industrial Average, and I've got names like United Health, Merck, 
Amgen, Salesforce, Microsoft, Apple, Visa, Johnson Johnson, Nike, Chevron. What do these have to do with industrial? Well, it's all changed, hasn't it? You know, we uh, failed to keep our manufacturing side of our economy as um, as uh, successful as it was in the earlier years. And therefore, other areas of the market have taken over and become more prominent in terms of how it's represented in the index. So are these 30 stocks simply the 30 largest companies in the United States? Not necessarily so. You know, again, they do it by this price weighted index that they've created with that. And and every one of these indexes has a committee, Dean. And the, and the committee really ultimately decides if there needs to be a change in the number of stocks and what stocks are in the index. Well, you get a company in there like 3M, uh, Boeing, mm-hmm. you know, I, I can see that, um, you know, but McDonald's, industrial company, not really. No, it isn't. It, it's misnamed, if, if you want to know the truth, in terms of Dow Jones industrial average, but because that's where it came from, they've kept it all along, but most certainly, because people wouldn't follow it if it was purely on the industrials. It'd become more of an insector uh, type of index if it was purely on the uh, on the industrial side of the economy. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe if you haven't already done so. And feel free to give us some comments below. If you want to watch this entire episode, you can find the link here on the screen or in the description below. Thanks for watching. Starting your route to retirement.